name is Amanda Wolfson. I use she, her pronouns, and I am an interpreter for the Minnesota Historical Society. I work at Historic Fort Snelling. My name is Kyle Imdek, and at the Minnesota Historical Society, I work for what's called our History Day team as a program associate. We believe that the structure is better suited for our type of organization where we have people who have so uh, so many different kinds of uh, job patterns. AFSCME's existing work with cultural institutions is has earned a pretty good reputation. Um, before we decided to organize with AFSCME, the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis had successfully organized with AFSCME. AFSCME's flexible structure of allowing locals to set up what their own due structure is going to be was really important to us because we wanted to ensure as equitable of a structure as possible for that wide range of workers. It was so exciting after months of work and other people put in months more work than I did to finally be able to say to everyone that this is happening, this is going forward. Yeah, going public was both terrifying and incredibly empowering at the same time. It felt just so liberating in a way because we had been putting this work in for so long and here we could finally see it coming together and to be able to now openly say, yes, we are organizing, yes, we want a union, and yes, we know that we have majority support behind us and we're gonna win this thing. I was very nervous about the election result because my vote was not counted. Uh, my vote was challenged. So that was a very stressful day for me. Overjoyed, relieved, excited. But after our organizer sent us the text that told us we won, it was such a huge relief. It was, I don't know, I felt like my kid just graduated from college or something. All those conversations that we had paid off. Even with the folks who you know, were hesitant to sign a card before the election that we really had no idea how they were gonna vote, Overwhelmingly, they all wound up voting yes, so that was such a, an amazing relief. The basic respect of having an established grievance procedure where employees who feel that they have been in some way wronged by their supervisors have a way of redressing that and don't just have to rely on themselves. Um, of course, pay and benefits always become a significant factor, paid parental leave being a big one for me, but also ensuring that we actually have a regular system by which people can get raises that actually outpace the cost of living, that outpace inflation. I don't currently make a living wage for the Historical Society and I would like to at some point do that. I had a supervisor who had a baby last year and couldn't take paid parental leave. It doesn't, we don't have it right now. Um, and that's one of the asks. We're also hoping to secure the protections of some of the diversity and equity policies that in the past few months management has tried to walk back and take away. Um, we used to have employee resource groups at MNHS, so groups where BIPOC and LGBTQ plus staff could socialize and discuss significant issues at work that impacted them. We're bargaining to windows back. We're also looking for um, more support for actual uh, diversity and inclusion work. That's something that um, a lot of our, our co-workers have felt unsupported around um, and we're looking to include some real language about that in our contract. Of course, everyone uh, within the local has a different perspective, but it's important to me to make sure that um, frontline employees, part-time employees, seasonal employees also have a voice at kind of the highest level. So that's part of the reason it's been so important to me. I think one of the most important things for me has been realizing or, or focusing on the fact that talking to my coworkers is not about talking to them, it's about listening to them. 
listening to people and of being open-ended in our conversations. Start the conversation more openly as a, how is work going for you? What are the kind of concerns that you have? Um, I think a lot of people have felt unheard for a while um, and just need to tell their own stories. And we're able to connect those stories to things that we're working on, things that we need to be working on or could be working on. Um, but ultimately it's about creating a space for everybody where they feel comfortable and they feel like they can get what they need. We're looking uh, to make this local a place where people can fit wherever they're coming from. Yeah.